Okay, we're alive. Uh... Let's get out of it. Have a sip of water. Okay, um, so I'm probably going to be working on um, the mesh colliders, um, specifically the uh, kind of mesh mesh shapes in here. Uh, I basically want to refactor them a bit and make it so they're they don't always have to be. Um, exclusive shapes because that can be quite bad when uh, um, it can be quite bad to um, in terms of uh, memory usage when you're dealing with kind of big mesh colliders um, if you have a lot of them you're gonna lose lose out on a lot of memory and simulation performance will become worse um, now the big question is kind of how, how do we determine if a mesh collider should be exclusive or not um, because you don't always want them to be exclusive right um, I, I think the simplest kind of way to deal with that is just to let the user decide um, so in here we could have a little check checkbox that says you know is exclusive or something, um, or um, maybe like use shared shape. Now I haven't done like really any kind of experimentation with shared uh, shared shapes, uh, so I don't know. Kind of how, uh, what restrictions they have. Let's see. You cannot update the attributes of a shared shape while it's attached to an actor. Oh. Uh. No, it's copied into the shape, huh? Um... Also, you can't use triangle mesh or trigger shapes. Really? So basically, we can't support this. Or this. Okay, good to know. Really should have read all of this before I started working on the physics system. But okay, so it, according to this, the kind of big restriction is you can't modify <coughs> these kinds of properties if it's a shared shape while it's attached, right? Um. Let's start by just getting rid of that and doing do an error. Cannot set triangle mesh collider as trigger shape. Um. Okay, 
so. Now we're going to handle a shared shape because if it's a shared shape, then we kind of need to store this, right? Like we do here. Uh, so let's go into the components. So, the question is, should we, I think, we'll have like a use shared shape, and we'll have it default to false. I think that makes a bit more sense, because, um, having it default to true would basically probably break quite a few of um quite a few of um, the existing mesh colliders yeah default to false. Um, yeah. So use a shared shape, and if that's the case, we need to kind of handle that properly. Um, so here we can just pop the flag in there. Also, user data will become kind of interesting if it's a shared shape because this shape will actually be attached to um well no that actually won't matter not to think about it not really important so the only difference is we need to check in here if it's a shared shape 
then we just need to access the pre-existing shape and attach it. I'm pretty sure. So... That... Where do we store that, though? Because it kind of has to be based on... The sub mesh or the collider mesh well really it has to be based on the asset so we have to kind of use the asset handle but that won't always work um. We could have a separate constructor for shared shapes. Also, we need a Boolean. Probably in the base class. I have a default false. Uh. Well, I should probably be able to set this even if it's shared because that's this basically just sets kind of the physics layer, so that should be fine. Um, Material's gonna be interesting to fix, but for now, let's see if we can figure out a good way to store this and associate it with the particular shape. So, for now, we'll use the kind of collider mesh handle for shared shapes. And I think to start off, I'm just gonna make um, an unordered map. And it's gonna have to be a vector actually. So if use shared shape and we find this. Then we can just get the shapes and use it, use those instead. All right? So
We just need to attach all of the shapes stored for this mesh. Pretty sure that's what we got to do. Otherwise, we need to actually go in and process this. So grab the mesh data. The entity scale is interesting though. Because we scale our geometry based on the entity. And I don't think we can modify that per actor. And we have a local pose. Now, if This we need to do We need to push back the shape should be fine so let's give this a go and see how many errors we get I imagine there's gonna be a lot Could also work on some uh, exposing the center of mass at some point. Let's use a test scene because there's a lot of mesh colliders in the other one. So if I tell this to use a shared shape, and same thing with this one, and we hit play. I don't think that worked. And 
in fact, we get a crash. Okay. Let's bring up... Ah, oh, that's annoying. We don't have the uh, physics visual debugger in release mode. What if we just do if and if dist? Will it actually work? Because it's going to be so much easier to... Oh. Because I don't want to do this in debug mode. And I think we need to update the physics debugger as well. Yeah. Thing is, I don't think this will actually work. Because I don't think we have access to the PVD in... Uh, the release build of physics. Which is kind of annoying. So, yeah, we don't, because I'm not getting anything. All right, we're going to have to do this in debug mode. This is going to be fun. We should probably, like in release mode, we should probably use some version of the physics libraries that lets us use debugging, at least kind of during development. Let's see what the performance is like. Uh, 
Well, it's not terrible. Okay. Well, it actually is kind of terrible. Okay, we're getting a serve. What? Okay. So we did get some errors. But it didn't result in a crash. Shape must be shared or unowned. But where is that coming from though? guessing it's here so annoying that that doesn't result in an actual like proper assert um, I think I can manually do that though by coming in here and Let's assert there as well. Save the scene and it play. Cool. So okay, so we're adding the shape. Must be shared or unknown. But why? Attach a shared shape. Oh, wait, hang on. I know why. It's because this needs to be negated. Because it's. Whether it's exclusive or not, that's why. Whoops. So it was in fact being exclusive when it shouldn't have been. I'm not sure why it's taking so long to cook all the measures at startup. We shouldn't be cooking anything. So let's give this a shot. 
Okay. Um, yeah, this is because we don't have any entities in the script scene, or rather in the current scene, which I think is just that bike does fine, we just don't do anything. That seemed to work, because we didn't get any physics errors. What's up, Daniel? How's things? Um, we're doing good, I think. Trying to get some uh, shared, uh, just trying to kind of improve the memory usage of uh, the physics colliders. Um, and I'm, well, okay. Right. And I'm running into uh, scripting issues for some reason. Yeah, it's super annoying because I don't want to be working on scripting. I want to be working on um, physics. I guess suppose in this case we can just do a quick check um, if we are playing. We can get the script scene map. And just say if going through my 4K uh, LOC code base, factoring before the code base gets bigger and I can never clean up. Yeah, um, it's best to kind of stay on top of that because we've kind of been running into that issue as well, where just so many things need cleaning up and half the stuff is just super old and not really working the way they're supposed to because we couldn't be bothered cleaning them up. Probably get rid of that. Um, define and kind of if block to be honest. It should work at least. I hope. Impact to it after two months, and I'm looking at it confused. You guys cast this though. Will take time, but it'll be worth it. Yeah. Yeah, coming back to our co code base after like several months can often just be so painful because you wrote some piece of trash code. And now you just don't understand what you're looking at. Um, but no, I think we've been doing a good job of kind of cleaning up the code and stuff recently. <laughs> the entire engine, yeah. Pretty much. Please work. 
Okay. Um, so, uh, I did not expect this to work. These are apparently using the exact same mesh now, or, well, the same shape at least. And we can, in fact, see that, yeah, they are. Uh, now I'm slightly scared. But something is going to horribly break. So, what happens, right, if I make this tree a dynamic rigid body? And try it. Okay, then it doesn't work for some reason. Oh, I think I know why. Um, get out of here. It's probably because... Oh, that's why. Because we're trying to have a triangle mesh for a non... Uh, kinematic dynamic actor. Well, that's annoying. But either way, that does seem to work. Now, I don't think it's going to work if we try and give the two trees kind of different scalings, because the scale is unfortunately... Uh, like, we use the entity scale to kind of determine the size of the glider. And that's kind of baked into the shape itself. So that means that shared shapes kind of have to have the exact same scale but I think that's fine to be honest um, you would most likely only use this for um, like static entities like this but yeah so if I for example scale this one down um, then one of these are gonna have to they're gonna have a diff um, an incorrect uh, scale. So if we play that for a bit. Yeah. And as we see, they kind of have the, the same scale in terms of the colliders. But I think that's fine. And we... See, I'm still kind of skeptical. Like, this was not supposed to work tried this before um also material should probably only be set once i think or at the least we, sh we should only create it once So, let's bring that in there. But yeah, so in theory, this is actually saving quite a bit of performance and memory. Of course, I doubt it fully works, but we're going to have to do some proper testing with that. But 
basically where this would come in handy is oh my god yeah so in this scene where we have like a lot of trees although they do have kind of different scales um But it's useful for things like this where you have the exact same scale of an object. Um, I don't think there's a way to have like different scales um, because it's kind of baked into the geometry. And we do need to multiply by the empty scale because otherwise it won't be correct. Well, otherwise it won't scale with the entity in question. Um... So, share triangle shapes. Let's call it that. I'm also gonna come up with a better way of kind of dealing with shared shapes eventually. Uh, because currently I think it won't work when we try and uh, release the shape. Let's do this for the convex shape as well. And I really want a better way of determining... Like, we should be able to say that even though the mesh itself is like a dynamic shape, it should still use like triangles instead of using a convex collider because that's a really dumb way of kind of um, determining if it's convex or triangle take all of this Yeah, here it doesn't just matter what. Here it also kind of matters. Uh, Zoomy, thank you for following. Highly appreciate it. Um, yeah, so here it also matters kind of what the what sub mesh we're using. Because currently convex mesh shapes only work for a single sub mesh. Right? Um, so if you have five sub meshes in your kind of dynamic mesh, you, then you need five mesh colliders. Um, and they will be convex mesh shapes. But for triangle mesh shapes, it creates it for the entire kind of mesh for all sub meshes. So you would only need one. And this was kind of Jan's way of handling this with the new mesh system but it's not technically correct because you can definitely have convex static meshes right um, because it can just be a single mesh um, wait what it you can you can have concave dynamic meshes, for example. You can have convex static meshes. That's what I was thinking. Um, but this is actually not technically accurate. And in fact, these shapes don't really care too much. Um, the thing that really kind of determines it is the cooking factory. Um, yeah, so here we actually need to say it, it 
can't just be an asset analyte, but it also has to be a sub mesh. So, I guess a better way of doing this is to store another map that goes from a sub mesh index to a physics shape. Right? Um, and it's an unsigned 32 bit integer. And we'll do this for triangle shapes as well. So go through them. Which will iterate through the submission index and that. In this case, we probably only care about the shape. Uh, submesh index shape. And we do this would be I. Um, let's just steal this. this go with and kind of verify that the uh, convex mesh shapes work. NISP RSA, thanks for following. What's up Echo? delete those and we find a dynamic mesh do we have any well we have the terrain but that's you know the shutters but I don't think they fully work yeah they do actually um you don't need a rigid body Let's do use shared, duplicate it, let's bring those out. weird because I don't actually see the collider.
<laughs> okay, yeah, of course. It didn't cook it? For some reason. And I tried to get it as a triangle. Which is interesting. So it didn't create the collider asset or something? Oh, I mean, the asset does exist. Well, that's not guaranteed because this is only in release. We should have a macro that doesn't assert no matter what configuration you're in. So... That's interesting. Uh, I guess we could just manually add in a mesh collider and see if that makes it generate a mesh. So it's super annoying that I can't do physics debugging in um, release mode. So let's remove this. Add in mesh collider. Say you shared. Also, why did that say shutter right? That's weird. Because that shouldn't even exist. Okay, now they have colliders. And they're using the default settings. Let's save. Hit play. That seems to have worked. Except when you close. Because material is null. Because it's already been freed. Right, yeah, we're gonna have to, let's do if m is shared and material is null pointer, we bail, otherwise I guess we can do an assert. But that definitely worked. Although this doesn't quite look correct. Maybe our, um... Hmm. Yeah, why does this look so much different compared to the preview? That's a bit strange. What is this scale? It has like a super thin C scale. Do the entities have that scale? Yeah. So I guess... Oh, wait, I think I know why. Okay. That's definitely an interesting um, mesh. Did Tim just screw up the... So 
the team basically screwed up the uh, the C scale of the mesh when he made it, and you have to set it to be tiny. That's not good. Um, because that also means the colliders get messed up. That's not fun. But that seems to have worked. Now, when we dragged a um, the mesh into the scene, it did break slightly. It didn't get a collider some reason. So... Uh, handle. Drag. Here. If it's meh, we do this. So we create the entity that's fine and we do build mesh entity hierarchy oh that's why this is incorrect um this should not be the mesh this should be an actual asset so and i think we do this in a few places where we do Mesh Collider Asset, we basically do this in a, quite a few places. Ah, uh, no, not that. This. Um, so I'm probably going to move that into a utility function. Um. question is where should that utility function live? Maybe in the scene? Um, I don't really want to have it live in the scene. Could put it in, say, the cooking factory, or in physics system, maybe. I think for now I'm just gonna put it in here. And let's do. Get or create collider asset for a mesh collider component. And we need to know the entity.
if the entity We don't have asset manager in here. Now, where was that function? Here. So it's node entity. And yeah, like this to do says import settings should determine this. But we don't have any import settings. So... We need to add this. Let's do that. I think this will actually assign... Yeah, it will. At least if we create it. If it already exists... Then... Well, we kind of don't need to do anything. But let's do... This. Do Collider Component. Set the submission index, which I think is just I. No, submission index is something else. Um. Okay. So that should now work dragging in a mesh Also I can probably switch back to release mode soon Because debug mode is pain. Uh, 
Ahora. That does look correct. Yeah. Cool. Let's go back to release. Should probably verify that it works in release mode as well. Don't see why it should though. And after that, I think... Fixing the collider cache is going to be tricky, because kind of, the collider cache heavily depends on the settings that we use to generate the mesh collider, um, and so we kind of have to account for that somehow. Um, but it is quite an important thing to to set up. Uh, how is Notion? I've looked at it before but never used it. I quite enjoy it. Um, it's super easy to kind of just start working on stuff because it's kind of command based um, and I think they support markdown as well so you just type forward slash uh, say to do hit enter and you do, now you have a to-do list um, and it's actually kind of powerful because you can like embed different pages in other pages um, I mainly use it kind of like this, just for a bunch of to-do lists. But no, it's it's actually quite nice. I think it's it's more useful if you're kind of working on your own. It's not really super powerful when it comes to like team-based notes. Um, we've kind of switched to using um, I think it's called like a sun or something, kind of internally. Yeah, I definitely recommend trying it. Super nice and simple. Enable that, duplicate, and move it out. And I assume this works. Don't really have a way of verifying it, but we're not getting any errors from physics. Okay. So we can take that off. Fix collider cache to work with the new collider asset. Right. How are we gonna do that? Because currently the way the caching works is it's kind of cat based on the mesh file. So, um, let's see where we have it. I think it's in. Can't be here. No, because it's per project. So, it's inside of the LD50. And under cache colliders. We have a bunch of cache physics meshes that use the file name of the mesh and the asset handle. And of course the problem with that is if we have two colliders that use the same mesh, but they have different settings, then they will end up using kind of the same mesh data, which means that the settings are ignored for at least one of them, which is a problem. And so I'm not sure how we should go about doing this. We could have it be based on the mesh and the asset handle of the, uh, the collider asset, but it's it kind of also gets a bit tricky when we factor in um, the whole memory asset situation right because not every mesh collider has like an explicit uh collider asset some of them just use kind of the default settings well most of them do and so we don't want like 50 like 5000 files 
because e every single one needs a separate file, even though the data will be identical. <coughs> so... How to go about fixing that? Because it's kind of this, right? It's the um, mesh file name and the mesh handle. So we could do mesh... We, we could say do this if it's a memory-only asset, because it uses the default settings. But if it's kind of a real asset on disk, we give it its own collider file. It's only like ca cache, essentially. So, let's say we do this, we do if not is memory asset, um, and it's the collider asset. This is also the wrong version of the function. This is the one. So if it's not a memory asset, it's a real asset. So we do collider asset handle. And I'm definitely going to change this to use an asset handle. Then we change the file path and the file name. Alright, so file name becomes the name of the mesh and the asset handle of the collider asset. Dot HPM. All right. So this stays the same. But this becomes collider asset handle. I'm not sure if this is a good way of handling it, but it will work, I think. Yeah, it should work. Um, collider asset is a real asset on disk, so we need to save its data since it's based on the settings provided by the asset. Um, we do that. That will work just fine. And the mesh car cache is gonna have to be based again, kind of based on settings. In a way, because currently it's based on the mesh itself, but we can have, you know, 20 different versions of the mesh. It's a map that goes to collider data. Hmm. Yeah, because we do need to account for the mesh, but we also need to account for the asset. So, what I could do, right, is say that if this is a memory only app, so, okay, if we go in here, we change this to first of all have an asset handle, which is the handle of the actual mesh. We could then have a another map that goes from the handle of the asset to a mesh collider data. And for say default colliders, right, that don't have an explicit asset, we could just say that has a handle of zero 
right? Yeah, I think I like that. And we'll probably have to do the same thing here for the static meshes and the, well, for the debug meshes. So this means it will go from collider mesh and then collider asset handle, but only if it's not a memory only asset, right? Otherwise, it goes zero. Yeah, I think I like that. So this becomes collider mesh. Mm. If it is a memory only asset, we will do zero, otherwise we need to not sure how I feel about this, actually. Gid Dome. Thanks for following. Highly appreciated. Also, why is... Oh, yeah, because we're deserializing. We're going to be writing to it. We should probably also make sure that the file hasn't been read in, although I guess that doesn't matter too much. Generate debug mesh. Yeah, that's gonna be interesting to update as well. Um. And this essentially makes the old cook mesh obsolete. Because it can't work. Well, it can, but... I don't see a reason why we would want to keep this in. I'm probably just gonna do if zero for now. Around... These functions. Just so we can have them around, in case we need them later on. And yeah, I'm definitely changing this to taking an asset handle. Um, glider handle.
Um, that means we can now go and change this to take in the actual handle of the collider, because it's also going to need to know that. So, get the mesh collider asset. Well, this can probably just take in the asset, to be honest. Might as well. Getting the mesh data is going to be done a little differently. Debug meshes, we're going to have to go in and do this. Not gonna lie, Hazel's assassin system feels a bit weird, clunky. I agree. Um, definitely. Um, blame uh, me. I did write it, and I don't like it. Um, but Jan has mentioned, you know, he will basically be rewriting it because it's. I think it was fine at first, but now we've just kind of added on more and more kind of hacked in functionality um, which is not great so it's definitely a bit clunky it's not super good in terms of performance so mesh um. okay I'm gonna change these to use functions instead well, yeah, I'm changing these to use functions. Um, they can be private functions, though. Add debug mesh, which will take Do we take the asset. Yeah. We take the asset in. The collider asset and the bug mesh. Because this will do if... Here we could realistically just check if we already have one with the uh, key of zero, but not gonna bother. This is just a regular mesh. Yeah. Mesh assets. This 
this is going to change to be based on the asset. Um, So if let's do asset handle color shadow mesh. If we find the mesh, then great. And again, I don't like having to check for if it's a memory only asset. I really don't like that. It's not a particularly heavy operation, but it doesn't look good. It's... Mm, yeah, I don't... I'm not a fan of it. Um, if it is a memory as if we do that and do dot add zero otherwise we need to check if let's finish this um I don't know. Mesh. Data. Map. Um. Not equal to end. We return. Sure. Otherwise, we need to do lighter handle, which is that one. No need to have repeated access. Should probably check the result of this as well. Find this. We also need to do this.
And again, yeah, I don't. This is not good. Only this is debug meshes. And yes, I'm continuing to work, write this particular code because I'm probably. I just want to kind of get it working. Debug meshes. Also, we should probably verify that this does exist, but cannot be bothered right now. Turn false immediately, otherwise... Also, why isn't this marked as const? Yeah, definitely be const. Okay. Let's build and see how many syntax errors we got now. This takes the handle, which inconsistencies gotta love it. Sign this anywhere. Yeah, I mean, we do that, but sure. We don't need to rebuild every time I fix an error.
uh, we can actually replace this code with get or create collider asset for entity and component. And we actually need to do that. So we effectively need to do this all the time. We do that. We then do that. Now this should, in theory at least, make it so that the, what's this, right? Um, this should mean that the actual settings will take effect at all times. So, if I get rid of these two, well, it's not, but if I go and create a new mesh glider, we call it shutter left. apply it to say this one Hang on. Uh, now it looks to be working. Is 
Is it working again? Okay. Um, no clue why that happened. That's super weird. I have another microphone I can use, but from the testing that I did, it seems like it's kind of a bit echoey, almost. So, yeah, I don't know. It might have been something to do with Hazel taking too long or something. Slowing down too much. So... <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, I think... Well, see, the thing is, the headset itself is actually kind of good. Like, it has really decent audio quality in terms of the actual, like, headphones. But I think the microphone is a bit cheap. I think they cheaped out a bit. Yeah, why isn't this a thing? Um, for some reason, it's not showing up. Well, the collider does seem to exist, although it behaved really strangely. <laughs> and we get a crash. Why do we get a crash? Yeah, no, it's it's fine. Don't worry. <laughs> um, I I understood what you meant, so you got nothing to worry about. So it's not shared. It's a box collider. So what's the problem? They failed to add the actor. For some reason. Poor Peter, yeah. So I seem to have broken something in a massive way. Well, for one, we're not actually releasing the shapes properly. Because we kind of store them in a static map. Um, which is a problem. And also, I think part of the issue is that we never add the shape to the shapes map in here. Which is a problem. Local post doesn't matter. And also the the user data is interesting. Because this is gonna be pointing to a very specific copy of this class, but it may not actually be the the shape claw well the instance for the given actor if it's a shared mesh. But I do think the fact that we were never adding it to M shapes was a problem. See, this is kind of why you should never try and fix stuff, because you just end up breaking everything. Yeah, 
No, that doesn't seem to be working. Although I think it was actually using the correct... Well, that's not what I wanted. Okay. You know, what would be really awesome would be if the actual um, debugger could give me some useful information and not optimize away everything. Because I don't want to be doing this, but I think what's going on is shape is null pointer. Why is shape null pointer? Shape should not be null pointer at this point. Unless we fail to create it. Yeah, I think I need a better system for handling this. Um, I almost think the scene should be kind of responsible for it. For storing like these shapes. Because currently we're storing shapes here. And inside of this exactor, we store these shapes, which is like, that's fine. But this is not fine. Because we need to, first of all, detach from all actors that have this shape. And then we need to free up the shape itself. Right? Because what ends up happening otherwise is... I think it's in... Where is it? Because I think we call remove actor. Which would end up destroying this instance. Which tries to detach the collider from the actor, right? Hey, right, please give me the correct one. But the problem is the shape has already been freed up. Right, it will, well, no, it wouldn't have been. It should still exist. But for some reason... So yeah, I think the issue is this. through and we do that. And then we just need to call but even it's the shape instance is freed it won't be set to null pointer so you might be adding null shape somewhere yeah but that's that's kind of the thing right um if if even if we free it and we don't set it to null pointer if i just go ahead and clear out all the shapes that belong to well um say the mesh here Right, so we do, we need to get the asset. 
before we do anything. So if we do, I think it's this, right? Yeah. Dot clear. Then here, we will just go ahead and recreate it. And so we should never end up with a null or an invalid shape, I don't think. I think. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure. And we should obviously already make sure that... Because, yeah, again, if... Because shapes are reference counted, we should never have an invalid shape until all actors have detached their shape. I may just have to kind of rewrite this entire thing eventually, but... Um... But again, this won't work entirely either, because we need to make sure that the shapes have a reference count of one or zero. No, one, I think. Hmm. All right, you know what? I'm definitely going to rewrite that bit. Eventually. Um. I think the issue happens when I hit play. Um, and then try to simulate. Because we're not cleaning it up properly. So if I just want to test this, I'll just have to do it once. So this has the correct one. Still don't get a preview though. We move this one over here. Get rid of that. Hit simulate. I see what... I don't understand what that... What's happening there? Is the mesh just... Is like the collider being generated in a, in a super weird way? Because it kind of looks like it. So we're going to have to do debug build. So we can get some info in here. Hang on a minute. It might be behaving exactly like it should. Yeah, it's behaving exactly as it should. Which... Okay, so I'm gonna change this back to shutter left. Um, the dynamic one, I think. Uh, cook and save. Now this is gonna crash, right? Now, it does actually have the preview now. Although I don't think it's necessarily... Hey. 
way. And we get a crouch, cool. Shape does exist, but M shapes. And does it? sources Well, so I think one issue is that we're using shared shapes. And we have two different kinds of colliders. Um, but that shouldn't really matter. So most likely what's happening here is this is just not getting cleaned up. And because of that, it have it's lost its reference. So. This won't technically be correct, um, but for a test, it will work just fine. So we're gonna do this, and I'll have to come up with a proper solution of handling this. Um, that is not correct. should no longer crash. So that's now using, and it doesn't have the, preview anymore. No, it does. Although the preview doesn't look correct, but we should no longer get a crash. And we don't. Although this one doesn't even seem to be colliding with anything. Which is interesting. Try clearing it. Yeah! What's up? Okay, so if we disable this... Then it works. Okay. So I think what's happening here is this one's using the same one as this one. So if I move it there, that happens. And we 
I check in here? Down massively, which is probably... Need to try this with other meshes. Really? Cooking the meshes messes with the mic. Seriously? Wow. Just that Okay, yeah, so I, I think what's happening there is there's currently a bug that um, makes it so that if you open the editor and close it, there is some kind of memory leak that has to do with the GPU. So my VRAM basically just maxes out until I close Hazel. And because I'm doing hardware encoding, I'm guessing that's what's causing the microphone to get messed up. That's super annoying. And it's probably made worse in debug mode. Well. Okay. I'm, I think I'm almost done with the testing, at least using the Collider Editor, so... Hopefully it won't be too bad. would be a good test. The desk should be a good test, because it has a normal scale. So we give it a mesh collider. It looks correct. Let's duplicate. And what the fuck is this? Uh, what? <laughs> what is what? That looks fine. Yeah, it's a game engine. Yeah. Okay, so that this actually works now. You can see the difference. Yeah, there's some tables. No, it's just, I'm playing around testing the, um, the physics stuff. And tables did in fact work. Awesome. So, the, they do use the correct colliders now. And we even see the difference in the preview, so... Cool, I guess. And here we can really see the difference between having vertex welding enabled and not. It really simplifies the collider quite a bit. Awesome. 
Again, it would not surprise me if we're leaking memory or doing something bad with physics, but at least it fun it functions. Um, but yeah, so I'm definitely gonna move this map somewhere else. Yeah, there's quite a big difference. Um, but that's just because I turned uh, ver vertex welding up really high on one of them, just to see the difference. Um, and to make sure that they were using the kind of correct settings. And they are. Which is awesome. Because that means my system actually works. At least to some degree. Yeah, this is where though. I don't... We don't get the preview after we load it. What if I do force cook? Okay, so it's just not cooking it. For some reason. Or, well, it probably is cooking it, but it's not... Well, now it can't be, because it would generate the debug mesh if it cooked. And if I duplicate this one, we should still... They should be using the exact same collider data as this one. And if I tell these to use a shared shape, then they'll use the same shape, and this one should use a unique one. I think. That works. Yeah, I cloned the table. That one doesn't work. Okay, so shared shapes don't fully work yet. Only the first one actually gets the shape properly. Which is interesting. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and launch this in debug mode and run the physics debugger. Let's see if it at least gets the collider dot off. What's up, EduDev? Um, I'm doing well, thanks. Um, making some real progress. I think. How's you? Well, I can English, yes. Uh, how are you? EduDev, thanks for following. Oh, you're doing it. Uh, I'm Gizmo, Daniel. Yeah. Um, make sure you update to um, the kind of most recent version, though, because in an older version, there were some problems with scaling. Um, just FYI. It's this IKEA simulator. What is it? Um, no, I mean, it's just, it's just a test scene. Um, Literally just using it to test my code. Um, it is the kind of forest project that we did for Ladum Dare. But this particular scene is just something I set up to test physics stuff. <laughs> uh, added texture swapping to my sprite rendered 2D component. So if I get Christmas working, I can start building levels and stuff in views. Yeah. Getting to the point, like when you finally get to the point where you can actually start building levels and that kind of stuff. Then, like, that's that's a good place to be at. Uh, shared shapes attached to actors are not writable. Seriously? I can't... I can't actually do this for a shared shape. Told him not putting off the massive refactor. Yeah, totally. Um...
Okay. Um. So what we need to do here is check if we're using a shared shape and if it already exists, maybe? Um. That's mildly annoying. So what I can probably do is... If we're the actor that did not, well, no. Do we set simulation data in here? No. We don't. But how do I set... Oh, so that has to be kind of set for the quote-unquote owning actor, maybe? Okay. I'm gonna put a breakpoint in here. Uh, will you be pushing your new secret work to... Okay, so the branch will be working on a private repo. Um, you mean this secret stuff that I have a kind of notes in here? Or you mean, oh yeah, the, the stuff that I'm going to be working on after this? Um, no, I think that will go on a, on a branch in the main repo. It, like, it's not super secret, but it's like, I just kind of want to keep it secret until I actually start working on it. Right? Because if I say now, oh, I'm going to be working on this super exciting thing in like two weeks, then people will expect me to start on that in two weeks. Confidential work for the CIA, absolutely. But like, if I don't mention what or when I'm going to start working on, then people won't bug me too much about it. And I can just kind of start whenever I want. But now I will definitely go on a... on a branch on the main repo. What I'm doing right now is I'm just trying to ver verify that I can do this as long as it's only done on the first actor that uses the shape. Uh, I'm gonna bounce, but it was nice seeing the progress. Take care, Peter, and happy programming. Yep, thanks for coming out and watching. Uh, have a good day, Daniel. And good luck with the engine work. Okay. Let's see. Simulate. Okay, so we hit this. And is it using a shared shape? Yes. So this is the correct one. We then do F5. We hit this. And it does work. It's just we can't set it the second time around. Um, okay, I think I can manage that. Um, so we need to first of all check if m component dot use shared shape and. If... Mm. Let's add a little boolean. Owns shared shape. Which we will set to true. 
in here if this otherwise it will be false so if you shared shape and we're not the owner we bail And we need to do this for convex meshes as well. We can literally do this. I just realized. And avoid a branch. Okay, so this should now work. And I don't need to do... Well, let's run it in debug just in case. Just in case we run into other issues. Uh, just one moment. I'll be back in a second. Okay, I'm just gonna order some food real quick. Um. 
Hey, I think it works. Let's just make sure that it still works for this one. Of course not. Why not? Wait, hang on. Yeah. Why does it why doesn't it work? Wait, what? It doesn't work for any of them now. So I broke something horribly. It's essentially what I'm getting here. Because I think it works on the first go around, the first kind of simulation. But then it just breaks. Which is annoying. If I do this, I scale this out, move it over here, and we rotate it so it hits both tables, right? Yeah, it does work on the first try, but then it just doesn't work anymore, meaning the shape is probably not being freed or something like that. I suspect. Um. So close to working, though. Um, doesn't have any shared sh shapes at all. Also, the scene, I don't think it's being cleaned up properly either. Now we have two desks, and they don't have any shapes. Which is... Not correct. Because this should no longer a thing once we detach them oh wait yeah it, it will still kind of exist because that makes a lot of sense because we need to erase this as well that's why because even though the shapes themselves no longer exist um, we still have the key present in the map and so we try and use the kind of shared shapes but they don't exist
And we may actually want to kind of determine whether we should use a shared shape or not kind of automatically based on some kind of properties or whatever. Um, but I think for now we'll just have it be a boolean and it's optional. Well, you should use it. That works. And now it does work. Awesome. But yeah, so we could say if multiple entities use the exact same... Well, that just crashed. Interesting. If multiple entities are using the same mesh collider... Um, then and they have the same material then we use shared shapes potentially All right, we've done that and we've done that let's say Again, we could add an optional boolean to kind of disable this behavior for certain entities. Um, but yeah, this is now working, meaning we only have... And like, this is kind of what, what the powerful part of this is. It saves so much memory, okay? Because if I simulate and we go in here... Because of the fact that these are shared shapes. We only copy the actual mesh collider data once. In the, because previously it would copy it for every single instance. So we'd end up having, you know, 50 different copies. Whereas now it only has a single copy. Most of the time at least. So that's actually quite a bit more efficient. Especially when you deal with big mesh colliders that are used frequently. So, yeah. Cool. Let's go ahead and set that to release, release mode. Now, what else do we have? I'm not gonna implement this yet because I need to kind of play around with it a bit more. Um, but yeah, I suppose I should actually check that the uh, that the forest scene still works. Because it could very easily have broken. Sounds disabled good. So let's give that a go. So yeah, the trees for an example. If we have trees with identical scales, um, just use the same collider. Use a shared collider instead of having a new copy of it every time. Lamp posts are perfect examples. Um, although currently they actually use box colliders. So, yeah, no, so this seems to be working just fine. Cool. Now, there is a bug. Oh, 
but maybe we try and quickly fix that before I have to head out. Because we do set this. So it should be showing them. It could potentially be an instancing issue. But, it's, well, it shouldn't be. Um. Oh, Ralph Jagger, thank you so much for the 100 bits. That's awesome, man. Seriously, I appreci appreciate it. awesome oh hang on I think I know what could cause this problem I changed this up well that shouldn't matter though hmm okay where do we have, um, not what I wanted, render editor, here. Yeah, so something is causing the physics collider to not render in the mesh editor, which is strange, because it used to work, and now it doesn't. Probably just forgot to update some code or something like that. valid that also looks valid Here we should have one, and we do. Transform is... Um, this an identity matrix should at least have a scale. No, it should actually be an identity matrix. And it is. Alright, so that should put it at... Zero, zero, zero. The collider looks valid. And it is. Um, no, it isn't. Very much not valid. What is this? We're getting past some... FOV and POV. Thanks for following. Much appreciated. 
and Toastmaster and Rogue, thank you for following. I do believe I know who you are. So why? It does exist, but it's... What, corrupted memory? Is it corrupted in here as well? No. I really need to do something about that name since I don't play World of Warcraft anymore. <laughs> Yeah. Old usernames can be a pain to get rid of. So it's valid here. But when we try and get it in here, it's not. What entity is this? Entity I have one. Okay. Um. So it is the collider entity, which, oh, hang on, hang on a moment, I think I know what's happening here, because we cook it and then we update it, and in here, ah, see, we're giving it the collider mesh, that's why it's borked. No longer take that in. Um, shouldn't take in the acid either. It should take in the acid's handle. That should have fixed it. And I'm confident, so I'm gonna run it in release mode. I'm probably gonna go ahead and head out. Um, we actually did get quite a bit done today. And one second. Um, yeah, so we did get quite a bit done today. Um, and it, I'm actually, I think it's starting to kind of come together. Um, it feels, the whole system feels a bit better than it used to. You have more control, it's more robust. Um, I'm probably gonna be streaming tomorrow as well, working on this. Um, and what I'm most, I'm probably gonna be working either on automatically sharing shapes or working on center of mass and kind of aggregate, using aggregates for Damn. Um, yeah. So either we're going to be using aggregates for dynamic mesh actors, or automatically sharing shapes. I think that's what we're going to be working on, so, um, yeah. But I'm going to go ahead and head out. Um, so, uh, yeah. Hopefully I'll see some of you guys tomorrow. Um, and have a good day or night. Bye.